we make our way to Gonaive, one of Haiti's major cities, for a high-risk meeting. Now, right now, we're traveling north to meet with uh, the guys who have control of certain areas. In the middle of the city center, two men armed with assault rifles come to pick us up. A surreal scene. They chat quietly, passing local residents who are unfazed by the show of force. They want to show us that their weapons are not toys. This gang has been accused of assault, shop robberies and rape. But today, they prefer to present themselves as a simple citizen's militia that defends the neighborhood. In essence, they have plenty of enemies. They are called Grand Grief Ticho, fearsome criminals or vigilantes. The authorities have officially counted 76 armed gangs in the country. Theft, murder, these armed groups do not shy away from any show of force. Their leaders are often considered heroes by the population. The most powerful of them is nicknamed Barbecue. His speciality, burning people alive in their homes. We met him in his neighborhood. To finance themselves, these groups have triggered an unprecedented wave of kidnappings in the country. Every day, 10 people are kidnapped in the streets of the capital. No one is safe neither poor nor rich. On the 30th of April, we were there to film the release of two French religious leaders, hostages who spent 19 days in detention. This small island in the Caribbean Sea has long been called the Pearl of the Antilles. Now it has become Haiti the Cursed. In 2010, an earthquake hit the capital. 300,000 people died. The state has been bankrupt for decades. To keep the country in order, each president has financed their own militias to reign terror in the neighborhoods controlled by the opposition. <laughs> Organized violence at the hands of political parties. Now gangs rule even in the center of the capital, and the police are powerless. A climate of constant instability which is causing discontent amongst the population. And a real panic amongst French people who live there. An investigation into the country on the verge of chaos, where gangs have the final word. Every day, the same cacophony of sounds ring through the city of the capital. Gang shootings. In San Martial College, the sound of automatic weapons no longer surprises anyone. Father Benjamin, one of the Sunday school teachers, may appear indifferent, but he is still worried. He has to drive across town for an important meeting, but here, traveling by car is never taken for granted. Jean, who accompanies him on each of these trips, will pay the price. The French priest doesn't fear the bullets, but rather kidnapping. 
va être prudent, on va regarder. To avoid the worst, Jean is in charge of showing him the least risky route. Only the young man hesitates, and Father Benjamin begins to worry. Là, attends, Jean. Robert. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait là On a suivi. Hein Allez ici. Quoi On fait ici parce que ici on ne va pas aller là. Mais là, fais attention quand même. Vous entendez mon père À droite, Jean, ou bien Nous voilà, les enfants, c'est pas qu'à couper, là. Allez, vas-y, vas-y, dépêche-toi. À droite ou à gauche Peut-être à droite. C'est à droite, mais la bloquée quand même. Putain, vache Above all, always be on the move. As in the last few weeks, religious people have become a target of gangs. Another French congregation has experienced this while traveling in a minibus. Father Michel and Sister Agnes were abducted, along with eight other Haitians in an outlying neighborhood of the capital. They were taken to this part of the city, Croix de Bouquet, a poetic name for a territory held by one of the most barbaric gangs in the city, the Mawazo, the bad boys in Creole. A gang that likes to show off its firepower on social networks. In a red t-shirt, their leader, nicknamed a hundred day death, is proud to show the camera his latest victims. Voilà. Two burnt bodies said to be police officers. With this gruesome footage, a hundred day death terrorizes the population and warns rival gangs and law enforcement alike of the fate that awaits them. Journalist, C'est pas nous même qui crée moui, nous levé nos jeunes moui. Excusez-moi. Et mon nom nous interview là, un beau cap à la voix. He may hide behind a scarf, but everyone knows his face. Here is his wanted notice. A hundred day death is in fact called Joseph Wilson. To free Sister Agnes and Father Michel, he is asking for one million dollars. We will try to meet him. We contacted two Haitian reporters who claim to know him well. Il a 14 enfants avec 13 femmes. Il est un près de vaudou tout. Ça veut dire quoi il est un près de vaudou qu'est-ce qu'il fait exactement Il fait de la magie haïtienne. Est-ce qu'il est respecté dans son quartier Très 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 respecté. C'est-à-dire que pour nous c'est un bandit Mais pour son quartier, c'est un peu un héros. C'est un leader. Il est très ouvert aux journalistes. Parce que nous, on a l'habitude d'aller. Vous, oui, mais est-ce que moi, si je vais l'interviewer, je risque pas d'être enlevé Ah, je ne sais pas. Un de ses hommes a essayé d'organiser un meeting pour nous. Bonjour. Oui, chef, là, comment est-ce que c'est journaliste là Il y a deux ou trois personnes qui viennent tard, mais est-ce qu'il y a un venu en dedans avec la caméra Non, pas d'accord. La caméra n'a pas besoin. OK. No time to ask him any more questions. We decide to call him back, but this time with our translator. La mort sans jour Vous m'entendez Qui est-ce que vous traitez et vous avez un jour Est-ce que vous avez un jour Okay. 
n'y a pas de problème en particulier avec les Français. Est-ce qu'on peut le rencontrer Est-ce que nous sommes capables de rencontrer vous A hundred day death is suspicious. He knows that the French hostages he is holding are worth their weight in gold, so he's afraid of a trap. In the kidnapping market, not all targets have the same price. Kidnappings also take place in the poorest of neighborhoods. At the end of this alleyway in the Shun district is a tin house of 10 square meters. Magdala, 33 years old, tells us that she was kidnapped by the Mowozos. Her life turned upside down in December of 2020. While she was in the company of a well-known Haitian orchestra conductor, five armed individuals kidnapped her in the middle of the street. <laughs> It's from that moment that this young woman will suffer tremendously. A million dollars to free Magdala and the musician. Her sister is far from having the means, but fortunately the family of the musician show her compassion. Three days later, Magdala was finally released and left on the side of the road. For five months, Magdala didn't leave her home. Traumatized, she stopped working as a street vendor and now dreams of leaving Port-au-Prince for good. It's 10 days after the kidnapping of the French priest and nun. All the bells in the country ring in unison at noon sharp. Wherever they are, they will surely hear them. A way to give them courage as the negotiations continue. In Haiti, kidnappings are rampant. More than a dozen per day. 80 gangs now share the streets of the country. The most powerful one goes by the name Barbecue. After 10 days of negotiations, we managed to get a meeting with him, his stronghold, the popular district of Delma. This is Jimmy Chirissier, or Barbecue sitting between his two bodyguards. Without their protection, we would not have been able to film in the neighborhood without being robbed. Wearing a multicolored t-shirt and casual shorts, we discover he is rather friendly. He explains the origins of his nickname to us. <laughs> Barbecue, c'est là les sorties. C'est juste parce que maman m'a fait manger cuit pour vendre et que tu chargé l'autre Jimmy dans le quartier pour te différencier ma Jimmy ça et le barbecue. And the rest is history. But as the footage shows, the reality is much more morbid. Barbecue speciality, burning down houses with the residents still inside. The new leader of Port-au-Prince is the head of the G9, a federation of nine gangs that control a sizable area of the city's neighborhoods.
Until a few weeks ago, Jimmy Barbecue, shown here in a denim jacket, did not hesitate to parade around the capital in broad daylight with his armed supporters. However, Jimmy Chirissier has not always been a bandit. In 2018, he was a police officer. Only in Haiti can one go from cop to gang leader so quickly. He is officially wanted by the authorities for several mass murders, including one that killed 71 people in 2018. He agreed to meet with us on one condition, that we do not film the men in arms who protect him at all times. On the other hand, he wants to show us his kitten. <laughs> Today, Jimmy Churissier wants to make it seem as if he's a respectable man. The gangster insists that he's never kidnapped anyone in Port-au-Prince. Not so convincing. We meet with Father Benjamin, who teaches Sunday school at the Saint Martial College. He deals with barbecue and his men regularly. The school is very close to a neighborhood controlled by the gang leader. Comment nous y est là? A frappé là? Oui. Ça n'a pas réglé. C'est en lait? Pour en net, attention en lait, il y a un tiré en lait. Il ne vise pas des gens, il tire en l'air pour, pour créer un sentiment d'insécurité, pour montrer que yo là, ils sont là, et puis attention, on ne peut pas faire ce qu'on veut là-dedans. On a les dans la boutique là. The school and its teachers are often targeted by barbecue's men, and not only by their shooting. There has been a kidnapping of a religious figure here too, a Haitian priest. Avant-hier, là, on a un confrère qui habite dans cette maison, qui est un prêtre diocésain, qui s'est fait kidnapper. Ils l'ont emmené en détention. Ils étaient une quinzaine dans, dans, la, dans la geôle. Il a négocié avec euh, Barbecue, qui est le chef de gang, pour être libéré. Mais il a, laissé sa voie, il a dû laisser sa voiture et ses affaires. Il est sorti presque nu. Et c'est les gens qui l'ont donné des habits pour qu'il puisse revenir ici. Non, c'est terrible, c'est terrible. And yet, the school thought it had bought its safety. Pour euh, assurer notre protection, eh ben, ils nous demandent une petite contribution, soit en nature, soit en financière. Des mecs qui viennent là, armés jusqu'aux dents, qui viennent s'asseoir là sur le banc où on était tout à l'heure, hein. puis on discute. Ah ouais. Ah ouais. A true mafia-style system. In Haiti, the church is one of the last institutions still standing. It runs hospitals, clinics, and of course schools, so it has become a target. For the people, the church is rich. Although we are not rich, if we were rich, we would already have finished building our school. Father Benjamin does indeed lack money for his projects. He is in charge of the reconstruction of the buildings that collapsed during the earthquake of 2010. For the moment, only the kindergarten has been renovated. Father Benjamin is trying to raise 500,000 euros to restore the chapel. Tu vois le transept un peu explosé là? Voilà. The Catholic school, founded in the 19th century, has 1,700 students from kindergarten to ninth grade. Comment ça va, jeune homme? Father Benjamin provides four hours of religious teaching each week. Comment s'est passé mon examen? Plutôt difficile ou plutôt facile? In his third grade class, most of the students pay for their schooling thanks to their families living abroad. The daily life here weighs heavy on them. Thank you.
To the great despair of Father Benjamin, most of his students hoped to emigrate. The school is located in a violent part of the city, a conflict zone between two neighborhoods, the High Bel Air and the Low Bel Air, controlled by barbecue. Just yesterday, his men launched a raid with weapons worthy of the police force. Ils se sont déployés hier après-midi vers 3 heures. Um, il y avait des tirs de gaz lacrymogène, des tirs euh, de balles réelles aussi. Et bon, ça a duré très tard dans la nuit. On a pillé des maisons, mais je n'ai pas encore un bilan pour savoir s'il y a eu des personnes qui ont été tuées ou si d'autres maisons ont été incendiées. Brice Destin is a member of a human rights organization. He keeps track of barbecues crimes in this district of High Bel Air. For two years, the inhabitants have been living under permanent siege. Here, to stay alive, you must stay close to the walls. To avoid the balles, at any moment, there can be des tirs. They know that if there is no possibility, they will say, the scouts signal us to advance. The closer we get to the border with Barbecue's district, the more there is a risk of being targeted by snipers. Allons-y. Hey, As we're in a war-torn city, we must avoid the wide open alleys and travel by the more hidden paths. Heureusement, there are a lot of corridors. We pass through the little spaces between the houses. And that's what allows them to circulate without being repaired by the gangs. We are finally 30 meters away from the border. In the middle of the road, sandbags were stacked by the inhabitants as a barricade. Pour éviter les les balles. Let's see if sort of the juba. Bah ici. Ça chauffe souvent ici, tous les jours. Today, the Bel Air neighborhood will not live up to its reputation. An ambulance was called in urgently. C'est une plaie pas balle. 116 m'a appelé il y a une plaie pas balle là à Bel Air. Ça arrive souvent, souvent. Ce sont deux groupes et deux groupes. Deux groupes qui se battent. The biggest challenge for Claudie, Charles and Joseph is to arrive before the victims die. Because getting around Port-au-Prince is an ordeal. No one moves out of the way, even for an ambulance. And that's not all. Many roads are barricaded today. It often happens that after a kidnapping, the inhabitants mobilize and block off their neighborhood. Today, what triggered their anger was the kidnapping of a retired police commissioner who lives in this house. Two voitures are venues, and then the agents are. Sortis avec leurs fusils, ils ont braqué, ils sont entrés. Ils sont entrés par où, montrez-moi Ils ont demandé une rançon déjà Oui, 700 000, 400 000. dollars américains. Nous ne sommes pas contents avec ce qui se passe dans le pays. Pas seulement dans nos quartiers, non, dans tous les pays. Defending their little piece of territory is the only way they have found to get the government to act. Anyone who attempts to pass is met with stones or glass bottles, a state of constant civil war and sporadic shootings. Hey, hey, hey. 
The ambulance drivers have been trying to get to the gunshot victim in the Bel Air district for 30 minutes now. Luckily, the police are clearing a street. When they arrive, fortunately, the gunshot victim is still alive. He is shot in the thigh. It is difficult to know what happened. Passers-by speak about a settlement of accounts. The struggle is not over yet. They must still reach the hospital. Why is there so much violence in Haiti? Brice Destin offers an answer. We meet him in the no man's land that separates the neighborhoods of High Bel Air and Low Bel Air. He explains that these gang wars are fueled by political parties. en place à une façon de faire les choses. Pour lui, c'est d'armer ses propres gangs contre les populations civiles des quartiers défavorisés qui ne sont pas dans leur camp. The neighborhood of High Bel Air votes left and is linked to the party of the former president Jean Bertrand Aristide. Voilà nous président. Nous président nous. Oui. Il faut que je vous dis et ces présidents là nous avons dit autrefois the only problem is that the adjacent neighborhood votes for the right. Barbecue and the gangs that run this neighborhood are favored by the current president, Moaz Jovenel, and support them by any means. Okay, ici, c'est vie. Des pierres comme ça, ici, ok? Des pierres, des gros bouts de pierres. Tu veux dire que c'est tout ce que vous avez pour vous défendre? Oui, c'est tout. Mais il en bas, il avait des armes, ok? Des gros armes, physiques, physiques d'assaut. C'est un cartouche. As if nothing had happened, Barbecue is campaigning. Seeing him walk through the market like this, he appears to be like any other politician who is trying to gain votes. Yet this man is the head of nine gangs, unified into one group that goes by the name G9. But in his opinion, he's not running a mafia group. chef de gang. Mais moi même moi pas prélé au chef de gang. Moi m'a m'a prélé au des jeunes des jeunes qui et 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 m'a prélé au des jeunes qui dans quartier populaire yo qui met tête ensemble. Barbecue and his G9 have a political agenda. Wall jeune pour famille allié main une main tout c'est gourmé contre crime en dedans pays ça. Wal Genève en famille et allié c'est gourmé pour mon yo gain caille pour yo rete c'est gourmé pour nous pour yo gain de l'eau potable pour yo c'est gourmé pour mon yo gain accès à sans santé mais maintenant qui condition haïtien vivre In a few months the country will elect a new president and new members of parliament every vote counts Barbecue and his G9 multiply their attacks to take over the districts that vote left and thus control their polling stations. In two years, they have killed 77 people in Bel Air and burned down a hundred houses. This is where their last major attack took place a few weeks ago, 15 dead, including an 86-year-old woman. Her house was burned down. <laughs> OK la gueule en bas pendant les deux bottes les casser. C'est là où arrive l'hôpital Avel. Le docteur fait Jack Jack quoi bien ça fait pour lui. Il vient nous cette tuile cassée. Ah quoi qui vient casser. The same day another house caught fire. Habité par. Monsieur Franck. Tout a été calciné là. Oui 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 tout. Il est mort brûlé dans sa maison, c'est ça Dans sa maison, ils l'ont calciné. Franck 81 years old, was paralyzed. Only these charred bones remain. Jimmy Chirissier's nickname, Barbecue, seems even more fitting. 
Vous avez parlé de barbecue, tout le monde pense que c'est un mais ça fait. Mais avec c'est un des plus gros méchants. Barbecue doesn't deny any of the murders. He even justifies them. I'm sure that I've done everything. When I'm going to go to the house, six people. Okay? When I'm going to go to the house, I'm going to go to the house with six people. It's just as simple as that. As this poster circulated by police shows, barbecue is wanted for murder. So at the local police station, we asked the officers why they weren't arresting the criminal. Barbecue, il est, il est, on peut voir d'ici. Pourquoi vous n'allez pas l'arrêter? No answer, only a laugh. Pourquoi? We asked for the equivalent of the Minister of Interior, but he also refused to answer. Police commander Domond Sansei is one of the few to speak out. A member of a left-wing union, he denounces the indifference of the authorities in dealing with the gang's influence. Barbecue, tout le monde sait où il habite. Pourquoi vous, la police, vous n'allez pas l'arrêter? Mais nous-mêmes, nous n'avons pas à l'arrêter parce que tout simplement, premièrement, nous n'avons pas gagné l'ordre pour ça. Et deuxièmement, nous sentons que le gouvernement, le état-major, n'a pas gagné ça en perspective. Donc ça, ça veut quand même dire que l'état-major et le pouvoir le protègent. Assurément, absolument. The Haitian police are powerless and often completely overwhelmed in the face of very well-organized gangs. Just a few weeks ago, a gang intercepted an elite intervention unit supported by three armored vehicles. Five police officers were killed. The thugs proudly display their loot on social networks, assault rifles, bulletproof vests, and even an armored vehicle. A national humiliation the Haitian state had to buy it back from the gang for $80,000. Since the massacre, the police are hesitant to intervene. They have a fear because, simply, the bandits have a lot of armed forces, armed forces that have a long time, okay? And we have the armed forces that have a long time, okay? And we have the armed forces that have a long time. The police have given up. So now the worst threat for gang leaders like Barbecue are the rival gangs. Just a few days after our interview, Barbecue was shot during a confrontation with an enemy gang. The citizens are the first to suffer due to the inaction of the state. With an average salary of 55 euros per month, Haitians have no choice but to suffer. But right now, a sentiment of revolt is rising across Port-au-Prince. As the Haitians say, ça a assa, they are fed up. In the streets of Port-au-Prince, we find the ambulance that is transporting the gunshot victim. Joseph, Charles and Marie-Christine are trying to reach the hospital but the streets of the capital don't make it so easy. They have been looking for a way through for half an hour now, and the situation gets even more complicated. A student has just been kidnapped, and the whole campus has taken to the streets. The students break into several public buildings, demanding an end to the kidnappings. The students then attacked an important state institution, the tax department. For once, the police are there quickly.
Despite this chaotic atmosphere, the ambulance finally manages to reach the hospital after an hour. The patient is still alive. A hard day for everyone involved. Joseph expresses his discontent. At the community of Saint-Jacques, where the two kidnapped French hostages used to live, it is also bad news. The hostages have been in the hands of the Mawazos for 15 days now. The kidnappers are demanding $1 million, a sum that is impossible for the small community to pay. Negotiations are at a standstill. Poverty, gangs and violence. An explosive cocktail for Haitian society and its most fragile members. Children in particular pay a heavy price. Adoptions across the country have been halved. In the best times, nearly a thousand Haitian children were adopted by French families per year. But today, due to unrest, the numbers have plummeted. In 20 years, Evelyne Louis Jacques has found families for 300 children. Not all of them were orphans, but for most of them, this is their only chance to escape from the misery. Ten years ago, we had already filmed in this orphanage, a few days after the earthquake that completely destroyed the capital. We witnessed the miraculous rescue of a little girl. Lean Vanessa had been under the rubble for five days. But that day, many children were not lucky enough to escape. After the disaster in the courtyard of the school, Evelyn installed a tree of remembrance. Today, while she has rebuilt everything, Evelyn, like the 750 other orphanages on the island, faces another disaster. In November 2019, a French couple who had come to adopt were killed in a robbery upon arrival in Port-au-Prince. It's Following this murder, France has suspended all adoption procedures in Haiti. Evelyn cannot find enough families. She has no more money, so she decided to close. Her main worry, four children from her orphanage have not yet found a family. She doesn't know what will happen to them. A good part of the country's economy is at a standstill. Westerners have fled the island. To see this, you just have to go to the restaurants they used to frequent. Two years ago, they were queuing along the sidewalk to get a table, but today... Only one sector prospers, 
security companies. There are about 30 of them, which protect the homes of the richest people and all the important businesses. The sector employs 15,000 armed men. Security is one of the many headaches for the French people who decide to live in Haiti. But that's not the only one. Here, all aspects of daily life are complicated. We have a meeting in the suburbs of the capital, in a rather posh neighborhood. This is where Virginie Tillous lives. A humanitarian who fell in love with Haiti 20 years ago. She's married to David, a Haitian, who studied in Lyon. The house is big, but perhaps not the most comfortable. Electricity, for example, is a rare luxury. Grosso modo, depuis 2018, on a environ 4 heures de courant par semaine. Donc on a investi dans des panneaux solaires qui nous permettent d'être autonomes en électricité. In her house, she doesn't have running water either. So she installed a cistern on the roof to collect rainwater for the kitchen and bathroom. Donc là, je vous accompagne au réservoir de la maison, qui est un lieu stratégique, puisque c'est là qu'on stocke l'eau qui est, qui est collectée pendant la saison des pluies, donc euh, la moitié de l'année, en fait. Et l'autre moitié de l'année, on fonctionne sur l'eau collectée pendant la saison des pluies. Donc euh, l'enjeu, c'est de ne pas consommer plus d'eau que contient ce réservoir. Virginie can't afford a security guard. So she's made her house into a bunker. Les maisons sont généralement aménagées avec des barreaux aux fenêtres et puis des barbelés sur les murs ou bien des tessons de bouteilles. For the past two years, French immigrants have been living in fear under the constant threat of kidnapping. Et ce que ça a changé dans mon quotidien, c'est que je ne sens plus que je n'ai plus de vie sociale. Euh et qu'on est finalement confiné. Euh, et c'est pas à cause du Covid, c'est à cause de l'insécurité. Virginie only leaves her home if she must, always in a car, always accompanied. Je circule en ville le moins possible, parce que j'ai peur. Et ce sentiment d'insécurité, euh, il y a 20 ans, il n'existait pas du tout. Euh, tu fermais pas ta, ta, ta voiture à clé, enfin tu, tu loquais pas les portes. Et, et aujourd'hui, euh, tu fais attention à tout. Tu regardes euh, à côté de toi, tu regardes devant, tu regardes derrière. Et tu es extrêmement stressé parce qu'il peut se passer n'importe quoi, n'importe où et à n'importe quel moment. For the past few months, Virginie has also noticed a certain animosity towards Westerners and in particular towards the French, the former colonizers. Donc parfois on peut être l'objet de, de, de remarques, de, de critiques, d'insultes. Euh, et ça, j'y suis pas habitué, donc euh, ça peut faire mal. Et c'est quoi comme genre d'insulte euh, Retourne dans ton pays, celle qui, qui, qui fait mal, parce que je suis quand même dans mon pays, même si je suis pas haïtienne. A country she loves and is trying to change. Her NGO is working on the issue of uncollected garbage. Haitians are used to throwing it in the street and burning it on the spot. An ecological scandal and a disaster for the health of the inhabitants. Bienvenue à l'école du Collège Classique. Virginie's greatest pride, making the air breathable for these school children. She got rid of an unauthorized dump behind the school. Today, in place of the garbage heap, the NGO has planted this Garden of Eden for the children. Donc là, j'ai dit, mais on a dit, tiens, il y a des fraises. À Kinskov, on a des fraises. Ça, c'est Boimeliad. Alors, la loi, on s'en sert aussi comme plante médicinale, pas vrai On s'en sert aussi pour le Covid. Oui. oui. Quand on a besoin de se reposer, qu'on a besoin de se ressourcer, on vient ici avec un bouquin, donc c'est agréable. Despite all these difficulties, Virginie refuses to leave Port-au-Prince, unlike many other immigrants. For the past two years, a third of the French population have packed their bags and left. 
There are only about a thousand of them left in the whole country. To escape this civil war atmosphere, some French have chosen to settle in Jacmel, in the south of the island, in a small paradise. But it is an El Dorado that comes at a price. To get there, you must travel by minibus, with 30 people crammed inside. Minimum comfort, maximum risk, because the Haitian roads are dangerous. The drivers are not always fully concentrated on driving, and the state of the vehicles is less than reassuring. There are no technical regulations here. As a result, there are many fatal roadside accidents. Halfway en route, a tragedy happens. A truck's brakes failed, causing it to flip, injuring the passengers. After three hours of driving, we finally arrive in Jacmel. The seaside city is famous for its beaches, waterfalls and colonial houses. But even in paradise, the crisis is noticeable. Foreign tourists no longer travel here. Eighty-year-old Claudie from France is coping. She runs a small guest house and restaurant. Her niche? She accommodates especially for Haitian customers. My colleagues who have great hotels don't work, while I work every day. Ne pense pas à cette clientèle locale qui veut venir sur les plages ou ailleurs, mais qui ne veut pas payer en dollars américains. A former embassy secretary, Claudie has worked all over the world, but she decided to settle down here. Ça a été un bon pays. C'est les Haïtiens qui ne l'apprécient pas. Ils ont rêvé tous de partir à New York ou à Montréal ou ailleurs, mais. There are not many disadvantages in Jack Mel. As of now, there has never been a kidnapping here. A thief did try to break into Clody's establishment a few weeks ago but the attempt was quickly dealt with thanks to her guard dog. Ça, je vous présente, on l'appelle Nico. C'est mon mouton, mon bélier. L'autre soir, il y avait des, des voyous. Le mouton les a chargés. Et le garde de sécurité leur a tiré après. Là, ils sont partis à toute vitesse. Mais le garde de sécurité avait besoin de... Le mouton avait fait le, le travail. Et c'était une petite For the moment, Jacques Mel is not affected by the violence that ravages the country. But until when? After days of negotiations, the French hostages are finally released in Port-au-Prince after 19 days of detention. The Mawozo were demanding $1 million. They received 50,000, according to one of the church's negotiators. The hostages are being treated here at the Catholic hospital of San Francis de Sales. Sister Agnes, 80 years old, appears to be in good health. Is que vous avez eu peur? Ah, but. There moments difficult. But, 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 Sister Agnes had two activities to keep her busy in captivity, prayer and gymnastics. I 
à en faire. Vous qui avez 80 ans, vous avez entraîné les autres à faire de la gym pendant la détention Quelques-uns. Quelques <laughs> Sister Agnes returned to her convent the next day. Father Michel did not even want to be hospitalized. Bonjour, mon père. Bah, heureux, Bonjour. Vous, heureux de vous voir en liberté. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Merci. 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 Comment vivez-vous ce premier jour de liberté Bon, je... très sereinement, bon, humblement, on essaie de... Je ne me rends pas encore compte de ce qui se produit, mais... Et vous en voulez avoir avis ça Non, pas du tout. The next day, on the hills of Port-au-Prince, we met Father Michel in front of his church, which had been closed for three weeks. Voilà, bienvenue à l'église paroissiale de Saint-Roch. He tells us more about his imprisonment. He spent four nights under the stars, and then in unhygienic conditions, 24 hours a day on bare ground. Les conditions de, euh, pour dormir, c'était pas évident. Bon, sur, les sur, les cartons. Cartons. sur les cartons, notre corps nous faisait mal au bout de, des nuits, au, jour des, euh, au, au fil des nuits. On a été bien traité, on n'a pas été battu, menacé. Ils nous ont tous dit, si on avait du travail entre nos mains, on ne ferait pas ce que l'on fait aujourd'hui. In the last week, the situation with the kidnappers intensified. Ils ont pris la décision de ne plus nous apporter à manger. Pas en représailles contre qui, contre quoi, je ne sais pas. Et donc, ça a été un petit peu dur. Et ça a duré combien de temps, ça 5-6 jours. Until the release. On s'attendait pas du tout. À une heure du matin, on nous réveille avec grand fracas, lumière dans les yeux, flash dans les yeux, en disant, euh, « Levez-vous, prenez vos affaires, allez, et rapide !» Father Michel has been living in the San Roche neighborhood for four years. Here, everyone knows him. He has not lost his positive attitude, nor his humor. <laughs> the whole village is happy to see him back. A class from the school even came to greet him. He tells them about his meeting with the chief of the Mawazos, 100 day death. Pas découragé. Dans la lutte. Quand j'ai évoqué avec euh, euh, la mort sans jour, en voulant dire, euh, lui expliquer que les armes font les gens périr, j'ai pris l'exemple de Gandhi en Inde pour lui dire que la non-violence apporte le changement. Il en est bien conscient. Mais malheureusement, il est victime dans l'engrenage où il est rentré dedans. Everyone has a dream that the next president who will be elected in a few months will put an end to all this chaos. But Father Michel has few illusions. Ce que je crains est que arrive un moment, ça va devenir un moment tragique pour le peuple ici. It's the first Sunday since his release and the first mass to celebrate with his followers. A reunion. Father Michel knows that he will not leave the country. Whatever happens, he belongs here. <laughs>